Today is Thankful Tuesday! Even though technically every day is the day of Thanksgiving. Thank you so much for resonating the sound to us. Man, we are just so awesomely, awesomely blessed and excited that you decided to come resonate the awesomeness of Jesus right here on RTS. I'm Chris Hanukkah. You know, follow me on this point here. And I want you to try to connect the dots here. You are loved. You are family. It is finished. I am sorry. Have you kind of noticed a little pattern there? Those are three word sentences. What does all of that have to do with tonight? Well, we're going to answer that question right now. As we take it inside the world infamous Resonate Church here in Jonesboro, Arkansas, and Chapel Pastor McKenna Boom kind of poses another question. We had one question last Tuesday night, and we got another one this Tuesday night. And if you kind of notice everything I've said, all in threes, well, here's the question we pose to you, and we encourage you to please take notes on this one and go back and study afterwards. What are your third words? Choose your words carefully. McKenna, it's all yours. Go get them. Let's go resonate. I'm gonna ask you, how many of you are excited to be in the house of the Lord tonight? I am so honored. You know, you know, you know, we take it for granted sometimes that we are allowed to be in service, but I know many churches that are not allowed to gather for many other reasons, but you know what? We are allowed to be here in the Lord's house. I know it's just a building, but we're all here together, lifting up his name, amen, and I don't know about you, but man, I'm excited for it, amen, amen, amen. Before we go any further, I just wanna give my pastor honor and praise Thank you for allowing me to be behind your pulpit tonight. I'm excited to be here. I love that man, so I just, uh, some brownie points there. But no, 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 I'm excited to be here. I'm always excited to bring his word. I say this a lot, but this is not something I take lightly. This is not something that I do just for fun. This is something I do because I love to do it and because the Lord has called me to do it. And I never want to not give him praise for that. Amen. 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 The title of my sermon tonight is, What Are your third words. Something really simple, but the Lord has been dealing with me with this, and I'm glad my teens are all the way out, my teens, my, my students are all the way out there in the back, because this is, for, we were talking with Nalia earlier, and we were joking around with her about how she doesn't know who our identity is. We were just joking around, just joking around and playing. But you know, that's what my sermon is kind of on tonight, so I'm glad they're out here tonight, and I, I want us to take notes tonight. I want us to really be thinking, and I really want us um, to get in tune with God tonight, because I believe he's going to do something great. Amen? How many is believing for something great tonight? Before we go any further, if we could, let's just bow our heads, and let's just invite the presence of the Lord here tonight. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you for the honor and privilege to be in your house tonight. God, we thank you, Lord, for the word that's about to be brought forth. God, from my mouth to their ears, Lord, that the devourer take it if not. God, that you do the speaking. God, that I just be the vessel. God, just let your anointing begin to flow throughout this building, God. Jesus, get it begin to rain upon your people here in this place, Lord. We thank you so much, God, for what you're about to do here tonight, Lord. We give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Sister Amy got me right there. Amen. What your third word? So I don't know if y'all know this, but my name is McKenna Brian. B-R-I-A-N-N. Where's my mama? She ain't even here. B-R-I-A-N-N. And yes, Brian with an extra N. 
Now listen, y'all, this is going somewhere. I love my mama. I do. I love her so much. But I would never understand what in the world made her spell Brienne like that. McKenna is bad enough on its own, but then you got to put in Brienne with the extra N. Yeah, I know, I know, Brian over there. But in school, everybody called me Brian as a joke. Oh, there's McKenna Brian. There's McKenna Brian. <laughs> hey, Brian, what's up? What's up? What's up? And, you know, I always thought it was funny. Ha, 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 whatever. Well, the other day, I was actually filling, I was filling something out, and it asked for my full name. So I went ahead and put McKenna, Brianne, Boone, because that's who I am. And then I wasn't thinking anything about it, because that's what it asked for. It asked for my full name, so that's what I gave it. And then someone called me a couple days later from what I was filling out, and they said, hello, is Brian there? And... Keep in mind, that is my father's name. So I said, oh no, but I'm his daughter. And he said, oh, I guess I must have just looked at the thing wrong. I guess that's your middle name. I said, oh, it's Brienne, just with an extra N. Isn't that goofy? Yeah. But luckily for all of the McKenna Briannes of the world, while our names identify us, they do not define us. They do not describe us. They don't say anything about who we really are. Something about our dreams or about our plans, about our passions or about our potential. It has nothing to do with any of that. Aren't you thankful? Because what do you think McKenna Brand will stand for? I don't know. But our identities are so much deeper than the names that our parents chose for us. When our ability to see who we really are is blurry, our whole emotional balance is gonna be off. And we talk all the time about how dangerous it is when our emotions get in the way. If we cannot fully see who we are in Christ, our emotions are gonna begin to get in the way. That's why it hurts so much when we fall short or when we fail or because our shortcomings seem to prove that we're flawed, right? Because we're human beings and that's what we think. That makes us question our whole identity and our whole value when we fall short. Because our emotions get in the way. It is dangerous, but it's hard to keep our emotions out of the way. But thankfully, my God doesn't see the things the way that we do. Aren't you thankful? God doesn't see Brother Bobby like I see Brother Bobby. <laughs> Just like Brother Bobby. God doesn't see us the way we see ourselves. And for that, I am forever grateful because, man, I love myself sometimes. You know, sometimes I'd be confident. I'm walking around like there ain't nobody on this earth that's better than me. Guaranteed. Ain't nobody better at my job. Ain't nobody better looking. Ain't nothing. But then there are days where our emotions take over. And you're thinking, God, what is even my purpose here? God, what am I even doing here? Aren't you thankful that my God doesn't see us the way we see ourselves? His standards and his scales aren't even calibrated the same as ours. You know, like when you have to calibrate a thermometer before you use it at the ASU games? And you have to calibrate it a certain way for it to read a certain way. God's is completely different. Where ours might read 60 degrees, his might read 180. It's not even the same. But the problem with us as humans, dadgummit, we are human is that it's super easy to just always look at our failures and our successes as the only indicators of our value. Well, God, I failed again. I must not be no good. I must not be worthy. God, I'm back up here at the altar for the third week in a row. I just must not be good enough to be in your presence. Or we might be, oh God, I'm the CEO of the company. I'm just too good to be in your presence. Oh, God, I'm so high and mighty because of all the success that I've had in my life. That's how we look at ourselves, and that's how we value ourselves. And it's really easy to do because we are human. But tonight, I want to talk just for a little bit about our identity. Do we know who we really are? Students back there, do you know who you really are? Crystal, do they know who they really are? This is something I've struggled with forever. And do, does it align with what our God says that we are? Amen? Exodus chapter 3, verses 10 through 14. It says, Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mightest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, 
out of Egypt. And Moses said unto God, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh and that I should bring forth the children out of Egypt? He lied, Why can't you send somebody else? Why can't you do it yourself? Who am I to do it? And he said, Certainly, certainly, 100%, I will be with thee, and this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee. When thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, ye shall serve God upon this mountain. And catch this right here. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel and say unto them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they shall say to me, What is his name? And I shall, what shall I say unto them? And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am has sent me unto you. So here in this chapter, basically God wants Moses to march right up into Egypt and demand that Pharaoh let his people go. That's basically what he's saying. And so the first thing Moses says back to him is, um, God, who am I? Who am I to march up into Egypt and go tell the Pharaoh of all people, not somebody on the street, but the Pharaoh, the king, to let your people go, and then I'm supposed to lead them out? Who am I? In other words, just for a moment right there, he felt unqualified. For a moment, he made it about him, and he started carrying the identity of I'm not qualified to do what you're asking me to do. That's the identity he was carrying around right there in that moment. And we are guilty of that all the time. My God calls us and tells us to do something, and we say, but God, don't you know I'm not even qualified to do it? Well, I can stand right up here and say, I know how you feel. Sometimes I don't feel qualified, but guess what? God said I am. So, ha, ha, here we are. Who am I? But then God goes on to tell Moses, that he certainly would be with him. And that to tell Pharaoh when he gets there that he had sent him to deliver his people. So Moses asks, well, you know, but what do I tell them? When they ask what your name is, what in the world am I supposed to say so that they know who you are? Because right then in that moment, it shifted. Because Moses right then knew that God's identity was more important than anything else in that moment. What do I tell them about you, God? Because no longer is this about me. When I get there and I'm supposed to lead these children out, what do I tell them about you? Not about me. Hey, I'm Moses. He ain't worried about that. When I'm supposed to lead these people to a new nation, God, what do I tell them about you? He forgot the fact that he was unqualified because God's identity was so much more important than his own qualifications, more than his abilities, more than the education he had. Because believe me, there will always be someone who is more qualified than you. There will always be someone who has more education than you. There will always be somebody that thinks they are higher up than you. But Moses knew in that moment that it didn't matter because it was all about him. It was more important than anything that he could possibly carry. And it was more important than the power that Pharaoh had. It was all about God. What do you want me to tell him about you? What's your name? And let's look at it right here. God agrees and he tells Moses his name. But what does he say? I am. Tell him that I am sent you. And don't you know, Moses is just sitting there like, okay, are you going to finish? Are you going to finish what you're saying? Are you going to give me the third word? I am what? And he's sitting there like this right here. That's how we would be. That's how we would be. Okay, are you going to finish your sentence, God? Because sometimes we ain't in the same mindset with God, and he's trying to talk to us, and we just can't really get on that same level with him. Well, Moses was waiting. He's like, God, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. What? But don't you know that maybe God was trying to tell Moses, and he's trying to tell all of us here in this place tonight something super important. Don't skip over the I am. Don't be so quick to fill in the blank 
of who you are. Think about those two words. I am. They're so little. Ba they're barely even two syllables. Yet it's the most powerful, life-changing statement that my God ever made. It delivered people out of everything that they were in. Within its power, it can peel off the past, pilot the present, and frame the future. You like that? P, 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 F, F. Pilot the past. No, peel the past, pilot the present, frame the future. See, my God's name doesn't need a third word because my God is everywhere and is everything in every moment. He's omnipotent. He is omnipresent. He is in everything and he is everything. But you and me, we need third words though. We need actual words that describe us, who we are, what our identity is in him. Amen? Because I can't be here and I ain't back there. I ain't nowhere near my God. I have to have something that describes me. Our name is the most common example. When we first introduce ourselves to someone, hi, I'm McKenna. That's what I sound like. Hi, I'm Amy. Hi, I'm Mariah. That's our third word when we first introduce ourselves to others. But let's take a minute. How would you complete the sentence, I am blank? How would you fill in the blank? How would you describe yourself? For just a moment, if you have a phone, if you have a piece of paper, whatever, I know everybody's got a phone because y'all be on them all the time. So get out your phones. And for just a moment, I want you to think what you would put in that blank. I want you to list some words in your head, whatever, some words that describe you. I want you to list some words that you feel like you're known for, just for a minute. Because we hear all the time about who our God is. We're given tons of words, tons of names that describe him perfectly. Don't you know that? I actually finished reading a book not too long ago, and I actually think it was called um, All the Names of God. And what it, it basically, that's it's exactly what it does. It lists all the names of God all throughout the Bible, and it tells us exactly what they mean. Okay, I highly recommend it. It's by Tony Evans. It's a great study because it takes you deeper, and it helps you to better understand the God that you serve and the things that he is and what he's known for. Highly recommend, but I loved it because it takes you deeper. It takes you deeper. Oh, Jehovah Jireh, yeah, he's my provider. That's so cool. But it takes you deeper. It gives you real-life examples. It helps you understand why he's called that, where that came from, and why it carries on. And I love it because I love getting to know who my God is. You ever just meet somebody for the first time and you instantly click and you love to know about them. You love to know more about them. You love to get deeper with them and that how, who they are as a person. But here's the thing, a lot of times we don't even know who we are in him. And that's dangerous. We know all about him and that's amazing. Please don't get it twisted. That's the most important part. But then we, we expect to grow and we expect to go deeper, but we don't even know who we are in him. And what we're not realizing is that's a hindrance a lot of times because how are we supposed to be who we are supposed to be in Christ when we don't even know it? It's not that we don't define ourselves because we do that all the time, 24-7, without even realizing that's what we're doing. That We just did it when I had you write it on a piece of paper or take notes on your phone or in your head. A lot of times, I'm unqualified. I am stupid, I am broken, I am hurt, or maybe the other side, I am blessed, I am strong, I am faithful. Which of those words do you yourself identify with? Which words of your own did you write in? I am not good enough. I will never be enough. Finding your own identity is one of the hardest things you will ever do. Here on this earth, here in Christ, it is so hard. And it's something that I struggled with for many years. And my dad can testify to this because my dad used to have to tell me every single day in high school, did you not? Sis, just be you. Stop trying to be like everybody else. Stop changing yourself to fit in. Just be you. Did you not? Every day. 
every day because it's an ongoing battle. And the problem was I had no idea who I was. I would change myself so much, and I'm telling on myself tonight so y'all can sit back and relax. I would change myself and how I acted depending on the people that I was around. I would change myself and my identity so often that I did not even know who I really was. And a lot of us do that and we're guilty of that. We hang out with this group over here and we're somebody and then we come over here and then we're somebody else and then we go over here and oh, I'm somebody completely different. That's who I was when I was in high school. And I had no idea what was going on because I had tried to change myself so much that I, I was lost. I was like in a whirlwind because I was too busy running around trying to be somebody completely different anytime I went anywhere. And it's what makes me think of it. It's like when someone with naturally dark hair tries to dye their hair blonde all the time. They try to bleach it blonde all the time. Now listen, bleaching your hair is so, I can testify to this, bleaching your hair is so damaging. You can still see how damaged my hair is when I bleach it all the time. And it's expensive, if you was wondering, which is ultimately why I am dark hidden and have been for the past few months. It hurts your hair. It hurts it a lot more than having it dark. But sometimes, that's exactly what we do to our identity. We keep trying to cover it up and hide who we really are, and our identity has been treated and bleached and burned and damaged so many times that the original color is completely gone. It's like you just walked out of the salon, fresh and new, no roots showing, no nothing, and you never guess that you were actually a brunette. You never know because we don't even realize or remember our natural hair color anymore because we've been trying to cover it up for so long. What are your third words? Are they mostly negative? Been there. Or are they mostly positive? Because I've been there too. Are they so tangled up back and forth? Because I've been right here a lot lately that you can't even put them in a category. Some days you're like, God, yes, 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 I am enough, God. I am chosen. Yes, I am blood bought by you, God. And then some days you're down here and you're like, I am nothing. I am useless. You ever been right there and it just goes back and forth and you're so mixed and tangled up that you don't know? But the thing is, sometimes our third words tend to revolve around our weaknesses. They have a lot to do with who we are not and what we can't do. And because of this, we feel unqualified and unworthy because that's just the way we think. And let me say that again, that's just the way that we think. That's not the way my God thinks. That's the way this earthling vessel likes to think. When you fall short, when you have weaknesses, when you make mistakes, that is what defines you. But the truth is, we all have weaknesses. Every single one of us, even pastor, associate pastor, chapel pastor, we all have them. We all make mistakes. And the Bible even tells us in Romans 3 and 23, for all have sinned, all of us, and come short of the glory of God. Not just a few of us. Not just the ones who ain't pastors. The pastors, this don't apply to them. If you have a title in the church, this ain't for you. That ain't what it says. It says, for all have sinned. But yet, even still, we give those mistakes and those weaknesses so much power over us. And I sit back and I, I think, you know, what in the world? What am I doing? We've all sinned. We've all been here. So what am I doing it? What am I doing giving it so much power over me? Because it's us that gives it power. We're the ones who speak life and death. We're the ones raising that back up to life and letting it have power over us. And I sit here and think, why would I do that? But then we get in those situations where we just feel worthless and we just feel unworthy. And here we go right back again, letting one mistake run our whole life. We've all been guilty of that. They have so much to do with how we see ourselves and how we live our lives. Why? 
Because we've all sinned. We've all come short. So why are you letting it run your life when we've all been there? Well, you just don't know, Sister Nicole. I've done it too many times. Honey, it's okay because we all have. It's okay because we've all been there. So my question literally tonight is, what are your third words? Go back to that list you made mentally, physically, however you made it, and I want you to look it over, and I want you to look it over really good. And now I want you to mark off all the negative ones, and I want you to change them to enough. Love, blood-bought, sanctified, victorious, healed, chosen, because that's who we are. I am enough. You are enough. You are loved. You are chosen. First Peter 2 and 9 says, but yea, are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that yea, should show forth the places of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. And there's a song by Hillsong, came out a few years ago, but it's always resonated something deep within me. It's who you say I am. And it literally says simply, I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. We have to stop living by who we say that we are. And we have to start living by who he says that we are. You are a child of God. John 1.12 but as many as received him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. You are a friend of God. John chapter 15, 15, henceforth, I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends. For all the things that I have heard my Father I have made known unto you. You have been justified and redeemed, Romans 3 and 24, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. You are no longer a slave to sin. Romans 6 and 6, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. You are a new creature. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. You are chosen. 1 Thessalonians 1 and 4, knowing, brethren beloved, your election of God. He chose you. So why do we let these things run all over us and let them dictate and control our lives when God has plainly told us all of these things that we are? I just named a few because there's about a million in the Bible. These came straight from the Bible themselves. We have to start living by who he says that we are. You are worthy. You are enough. You are qualified. No matter what you say about yourself, no matter about what so-and-so says about you, because there will always be people that will talk about you and say, she ain't nothing. He ain't nothing. I don't know why they're trying, because they ain't never going to do a look of nothing. It's easy to get discouraged. It's easy to let those run all over you and get you discouraged. But God has plainly told us, who we are in him. So why are we allowing it to do that? We have to stop letting our mistakes and our downfalls identify us. Because we find our identity in him. You're never going to find it switching from this church to this church to this church to this church. You're never going to find it hanging out with this person and this person and this person and this person. You're never going to find it going here and there and there and there. You're only going to find it when you truly surrender over to him and say, God, I'm tired of living in my own identity, but God, I want you to fill in the blank with my third word. God, I don't want to do it anymore. I give it all to you. What do you say my third word is, God? Because depending on the day, I might fill my own third word in with something, God, that doesn't line up with your word. You will never say, God, that I'm not enough. 
You will never say, God, that I am nothing. So I need you to fill in the third word for me. I want to be about your business because don't expect to grow in God if you're not completely surrendered over to him. And in order to completely surrender over to him, you have to give him every bit of you, which is your whole identity. It's hard, but it's worth it. You're going to go through things in your life. You know, you know, you know, sometimes when we get saved and we go to Christ, we think everything's going to be smooth sailing. We think everything, that life is just going to be grand and good, but that's not really quite it. He never said that life was not going to be hard. He said life was going to be worth it with him. He promised us a life and a life that's more abundant. The life that's more abundant is not always here, but it's supposed to be when we get up there. It's going to be hard. It's going to be hard when you have to go and surrender it over to God and say, God, I don't even know what to do. I don't know who I am, but I need you to tell me. Mariah is so unique, and I'm going to use Mariah. I hope you don't care. Mariah is so unique, but she knows exactly who she is in Christ. She's not going to let somebody else come up to her and say, I don't know what in the world you're doing because that don't make no sense. She said, I know who I am in Christ, and I have identified myself in him. That's who I am, and I'm not going to let anybody else change who I am. I admire her because she's strong in her faith. She's strong in what she believes. And that's a perfect example of how we should be. Stop going from here to here to here to here and pass well, what do you think? Who do you think I'm supposed to be in Christ? What do you think I'm supposed to be doing? How about you let God fill it in instead of looking to every other person and letting them fill it in for you? I said a minute ago, we don't need to fill it in ourselves, and we don't. But a lot of times, okay, we don't need to fill it in ourselves, so I'll go ask Brother Christian what he thinks. I'll go ask Sister Pastor Pam what she thinks. I'll go ask Pastor Christian. I'll go ask Pastor Brian. I'm going to go see what they think. Why are you looking to man? Why don't we just completely surrender over to God and say, God, how about you just fill it in? And I'm going to do what you want me to do from there. So tonight, I challenge you. I challenge you completely to surrender over tonight and say, God, I'm kind of guilty when it comes to, make, to filling in my third word. I'm kind of guilty of putting some negative things down because, God, I just don't feel like enough sometimes. God, I just don't feel qualified sometimes. God, I just don't feel like I can ever do anything right sometimes. And God, I, I know, I know, I know you've promised me in ministry. And God, I know, I know, I know you've promised me. You've promised me this. You've promised that my family will be saved. But God, I just don't feel like I'm enough to do it. Anybody there? Because I've been there. You are enough. If God promised you something and he said you're going to be the one to do it, honey, put your shoes on, lace them up, and get ready to go because you're going to be the one to do it. Or you're going to be sitting around for 30 years waiting on nothing to happen because it ain't going to happen until you get up and you do it. When he calls you to do it, you better do it. You're going to feel unqualified. You're going to feel like you're not enough. But when we allow God to fill it in instead of us, instead of pastor, instead of anybody else inside of a building or outside of a building, you're never going to find who you truly are. You say, but McKenna, it's hard. You don't, you don't understand. You don't know what I'm going through. We, ha we, we face different stuff. We don't face different stuff. The Bible says all things are common among man. We all go through the same stuff. Believe it or not, pastors still face some stuff. Believe it or not, we still go through some of the same battles that you go through. But a lot of times, we get in our own way. We make it so much harder than it has to be. And did I say that? Yes, I did. Because we give stuff so much power over us. Instead of just giving it covered by the blood and say, I'm done with it, God, fill it in for me. God, a lot of, we've already filled in a lot of our own third words tonight, but I challenge you tonight to take an eraser and completely mark it out and give the pencil to God. We don't need to walk out how we came in. A lot of us don't. Because we've been tired, we've been hurt, we've been beat, we've been abused, and we're just letting everything run all over us. 
We have the power, the power of one, like Pastor Pam preached this morning. We have that power in us. It's our time to decide to use it and say, I'm done letting all this stuff control me and who I am in Christ. God, you fill in the third word for me tonight. Hi everyone, Cornbread Chris Heineken here, of course, represent Resonate Town and Resonate Church. We want to say a special thank you for worshiping with us right here today. Or no matter where you are, whether you're joining us live and in person at Resonate Church, or whether you're joining us on television via your syndicated stations, or whether you're joining us internationally, courtesy of our YouTube simulcast, or no matter where you are, thank you so much for your support each and every week. Now, just saying, Cornbread. You know, you got to bless us so much, but we want to turn around and bless you through the after worship call, give in. How do we do it? Glad you asked. There are four ways in which you can resonate your giving. Check it out. Number one, you can resonate your giving by joining us live and in person right here at Resonate Church at 418 County Road 421, right off Highway 1 and Stadium Boulevard, here in Jones for Arkansas. Doing our worship experience, Sunday, 10 a.m. and 5 p.m., Wednesdays at 6 30. Option number two, online. You see that laptop right there with that orange screen with a time link on it? Well, all you have to do if you want to resonate your giving online is just go to that time link and follow the directions here. Also, make sure you specify where you want your gift going towards. It's safe, secure, easy, simple to do. And that's if you want to resonate your giving online. All you got to do is go to that time link, follow all the instructions there. You can resonate your giving that way. Option number three, your cell phone. Look, we all got one. We might as well put it you, shall we? But guess what? If you want to resonate your giving using your cell phone, it's very simple to do. It's, it's a thing called text to give. All you have to do is text the word give to that 501 number that you see right there on your screen. Safe, secure, fast, simple, easy to do. Option number four, mail. If you want to mail your contribution to us via check or money order, you can do so with the address on your screen. But let's specify this. If you are sending check or money orders, please make all checks and money orders payable to Resonate Church. Let me repeat that. If you are sending check or money orders, to that address on your screen. Please make all your checks and your money orders payable to Resonate Church. And those are your four options on which you can resonate your giving. And you, if you want more info, all you have to do is go to our website, resonatechurchar.org for all the details. Hi everyone, Barbara and Chris Heineken here. Host of Resonate the Sound encourage you to resonate with us two ways. First, join us live at 418 County Road 4021, which is right off Highway 1 to Stadium Boulevard in Jonesboro, Arkansas, every Sunday, 10 a.m. and 5 p.m. and Chapel Wednesday nights at 6 30. Or you can join us every Thursday night in syndication and YouTube at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And always remember, show love, your peace, resonate Jesus. We'll see you then. Mm. Wow, that's good, Ken. Big time something to think about. Thank you very much. You know, the unwritten code, and I've said it before many times, and I said it last year, and I've, and I've said it again multiple times throughout this year. The unwritten code of our U.S. Constitution and the unwritten code throughout all forms of government and laws, even money laws. The unwritten code of all of that is corporate special. That's me. Corporate special, which is proper Proverbs 1821. Life and death comes from right here. Right here. Choose your words carefully. Speak positive. Let your third words.
be positive, encouraging, and uplifting. I never really heard about it that way, Kenna. That was awesome. Thank you. Mm. You know, there's a there's a verse in the Bible that says, and let the words from my mouth and meditation of my heart be pleasing in thy sight. Why do we ask God to guide our words? Or better yet, ask God to become the words that we say. Life or death. Really depends on your third words. And also, depends on what comes here. Because you speak, you eat what you speak and you speak what you eat. Or, you speak what you eat and you eat what you speak. Live your truth. Live the life. Love each other. God, thank you so much for resonating this out to us. Thank you and help for watching. And hey, we'd love to have you right here at Resonate. Hey, all you gotta do is just make the drive, make the travel plans, get them all ready to roll. Because trust me, this is, I mean, we're the realists in the game. This is the place to be each and every week. You see the info right there on the screen. Also, multiple ways in which you can resonate your giving. Our other option is available at our website, resonatechurchar.org. And all the pictures, all the news, all the scoops, all the views, all the info, and so much more. Facebook.com forward slash resonateAR is the place. And if you're watching this program on our YouTube Soundcast, like this video, subscribe to our channel, and ring the bell. Ding, 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 ding. That way you won't miss any episode. And we got another good one coming for you this Thursday. Oh, yeah. Last week was a return. This Thursday night, we have another return. If you thought the Kool-Aid was so cool last year, oh, it gets upped this year when she returns right here to Resonate the Sound. And all the way to find out is if you join us. Well, yeah. We'd love to have you here with us this Thursday night, 9 p.m. Eastern and Pacific, 8 p.m. Central and Mountain on your local stations, and 9 p.m. Eastern Worldwide on YouTube. We encourage you to join us. Until we see you this Thursday night for our entire crew. I'm Chris Ivan. We say to you, shout love, give peace, you know what? We resonate you. See ya this Thursday night, 9 p.m. Eastern. Have a good night, everyone. Good night, Canada. Good night, everyone. Neither death nor grave. Stop like I can stop like I can.